Hey everyone, this is Don Rasmussen. Welcome to the Love America Hate Taxes uh, podcast. And we're again, I'm here with Ryan Cook, uh, my uh, trusty sidekick. <laughs> Don't kick him too often. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ryan, listen, you know, um, last last few years since COVID, you know, one of the, the topics has been the uh, employee retention tax credit. And of course, there's been billions of dollars distributed. But what that also did is that created um, a lot of scrutiny because there was abuse. And unfortunately, like anything else out there, Ryan, when there's money involved, there's going to be abuse. And uh, yeah, I think I shared on one of our podcasts what one of our tax attorneys was actually in Washington, D.C. Uh, last year, right before they put the hiatus, uh, September of last year. And he said that the, the straw that broke the camel's back for the abuse was someone up in, uh, I believe it was New Jersey, who was doing ERC for Uber drivers. So, you know, they don't have any employees. Uh, the owner's not, in, in, uh, so what he would do is he would say, okay, listen, you know, whatever you get, we split it 50-50. Now the guy's going to jail if he's not already in jail. But mm. it's, it's those type of situations and those type of things that create problems for everybody else out there. Now there was a lot of what we call ERC mills out there that were just thrown against the wall. Um, you know, they're using very, uh, I would call them, you know, unscrupulous loopholes, like if, you know, if you were affected by 10% of your, you know, supply chain and all this stuff there, and that's where the IRS has really taken a strong uh, push against this. And what we're seeing now, that uh, if you are starting to get letters of 105 Cs, um, you know, which is a denial, now that denial isn't overall the whole credit, potentially, um, it may be for a quarter, and I'll tell you, the ones we're seeing that come at is generally that third quarter of 2021 because, you know, the, the reality is we were coming out of COVID, and you'd really have to have very good documentation to be able to prove that. So Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, with the ERC, it's, uh, for some of these people, we even know clients, it's, uh, they applied for 2020 and 2021. They're still waiting on money oh, yeah. for those years. And uh, there's a lot of, you know, worry about, you know, am I going to get these funds? Is, you know, what's going to happen? Because of the abuse, it's kind of like, has the IRS retracted their hand? And so <laughs> we are, we are kind of seeing a few, few things come uh, up from this. And uh, if you did get one of those letters, there are um, some rebuttals that you can send back to the IRS. Um, and there's some specific things in this. And so um, if you happen to get a letter, you do have 30 days to respond to that. Um, and then a two-year time clock essentially begins. And so, Don, they do you just want to open that up. Actually, yeah. At first, it was just thirty days. So you had to, you know, refute it in thirty days, and you only had thirty days to fix it. Now yeah. they've they've extended it. If you request an appeal and, and you provide the documentation to go along with it when you send your appeal, then you can extend that that statute for about two years. Yeah. So. Now, some things to remember with this: um, that two years has to be satisfied, like your request. So whenever you submit this in, you start your rebuttal and your uh, claim for this. That two years, your entire case has to be resolved within two years. Unless you file a lawsuit. Unless you file a lawsuit but for this to you know be approved or to get more time or whatever the case may be. And so you don't get two years um, you know, to just go back. It has to be finished, filed, and everything like that, or the IRS is saying sorry, yeah. essentially, with that. Yeah, you snooze, you lose type so, situation. Absolutely. And, and the challenge, Ryan, mm -hmm. is... Is, is typically in the appeals process with the IRS mm -hmm. is that the appeals process is so backed up. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see so much of this because there's a million and a half claims of ERC that's been sitting at the IRS for the last over a year. Yeah. And so they're trickling things out. Um, you know, And like I said, what we're seeing is generally that third quarter of 21 is probably the most questionable one that we've seen across the board. But mm -hmm. that all being said is that if you have a legitimate claim then if you get a, a 105C letter from the IRS, make sure you appeal it. Uh, now, if, you're, if you went through one of these uh, ERC mills, you know what, I'd be very, very cautious yeah. <laughs> of going down that path because you, know, you better have the legitimacy, you know, the drop in revenues and all the different factors that came in for the ERC. Absolutely, yeah. Because um, a lot of these ERC mills aren't even around anymore. No, no. no. And, and so as soon as they're gone, you know, I hope, you know, you might be able to get your accountant to look through some of those numbers and verify those things. 
Um, but before you do that rebuttal, make sure that all your numbers are correct and you don't want to open up any doors. You don't want to exactly have anybody walk through that you don't want to walk through. Yeah, so. and the ERC was a tremendous benefit to a lot, a lot of blessings to businesses mm -hmm. out there that you know are still struggling even today, Ryan. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I was talking to a, a, a CPA out on the West Coast yesterday, and they did a lot of restaurants, which you know the reality is restaurants took it in the shorts mm -hmm. um, during COVID, and even today a lot of them are, are struggling. But, you know, if you're not a restaurant and, you know, you don't have that decrease in revenues, that's going to be the big thing they're going to be looking at is that when you drop that P&L, uh, making sure that you have those numbers to show that you did have enough drop to warrant that. The other ones, like I said, are going to be the more difficult exceptions to be able to prove unless you had a state shutdown. Mm -hmm. Like we worked a lot of um, uh, charities, some churches, some nonprofits that were mandated not mm -hmm. to have services or whatever the case is, yeah. or events. Event venues, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So, so um, I know uh, as a company, what are we seeing as far as um, IRS or responses to ERC inquiries? I mean, are, are they still not giving updates on those, or what are we seeing yeah. as far as that the, goes? When we check with the IRS on people, uh, they said they're processing. Mm. But I will tell you something, and I tell my clients this all the time. I said, listen, if, if that's what we're getting from the IRS, the best thing you can do is contact your senator, or your, your congressman, congresswoman, and ask them to intervene. Ask their office to intervene because it's a squeaky wheel that gets the attention. So if you've been sitting in there, you know that you have a legitimate claim and you could really use the money, I would, by Jove, I'd be, get on a call with your, your senator's office and say, listen, I've been waiting 14 months, 15 months, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, for this claim, and it's a legitimate one. Would you please you know, contact those who can move this thing along. It's because most people don't do that, yeah. and their CPAs don't tell them to do that. I'm telling you that if you have a legitimate claim and you've not received your money yet, contact your congressman, your senator. Yeah. So. And just to end on some good news is we have had a few clients actually get their ERCs, yeah. and, they, and they're, they are still processing them. It's just slow as molasses in wintertime, <laughs> but they, that's a southern saying for yes. all the northern viewers out there. <laughs> But, uh, but, yeah, it is one of those things where it's patience is key. But if you do happen to get one of those letters, again, just to kind of recap, make sure you respond within that 30-day window. And then make sure you kind of get on top of getting them their information quickly because you only have that two-year window to be able to complete that and be able to have it finished up so you can have your claim in and done. Yeah, if you're going to send back that response, you can. They do allow you to fax it back. Uh, but I would make sure that if not, I'd FedEx it with a return receipt, I mean a signature requirement, or a U.S. Uh, priority mail with a signature return receipt because you want to make sure that you hit that 30 days or earlier because mm -hmm. uh, if you snooze, you lose. That two years is gone. So you've got to do it within that 30-day window. That's good to know. Anything else, Tom? No, that's it for today. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for joining us again on today's Love America, Hate Taxes podcast. Uh, if you like it, uh, please like and share this podcast with your friends on social media, all that good stuff. And again, if you're interested, we do have T-shirts that say Love America, Hate Taxes on it. Uh, drop us an email. We'll be uh, able to get that one of those shirts out to you. So thank you. And until next time.